Good morning everyone. Again, my name is Brad Walter and today we're going to be discussing a flight scenario where uh, you, the pilot, is going to be taking uh, two of your friends to from Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, Minnesota to Dallas, Texas to go watch the Vikings play the Cowboys. For today's flight, you're going to be flying from KMSP, which is uh, Minneapolis St. Pete International Airport, it's a Class Bravo Airport, down to KRBD, which is Dallas Executive Airport. Um, they're uh, flying out of Minneapolis, it's going to be Class Bravo, and then um, down to Dallas, you're going to be around Class Bravo, most likely you're going to have to fly through Bravo. Um, Dallas Executive is located under a shelf of the Bravo airspace. So you may be able to get in without flying into it, but chances are they're going to vector you through the Bravo airspace. Uh, so a good thing to keep in mind, um, uh, it's going to be a 751 nautical mile flight. That's if you're direct. Um, I'm sure you'll have different routing. It's going to take approximately six hours. Uh, you're a private pilot with multi-engine rating. It doesn't say that you're instrument rating, rated, um, so we'll go with just just being a regular uh, private pilot without an instrument rating. You're going to be flying two of your friends to go see the football game. Uh, one friend is nervous about flying, and the other one is curious, asking lots of questions about everything that's going on with your flight. So a couple of, a couple of challenging uh, personalities there to work with uh, throughout this flight. So I think one of the best things that you can do as the pilot for this flight is um, just to help instill confidence in, especially the one that's nervous, and um, you know, just just to talk through everything that you're doing for your free flight. Um, go over the PAVE checklist, um, tell them how you're evaluating yourself and the aircraft, um, the I am safe checklist to evaluate yourself, the aero checklist for the plane, NW craft, making sure you have all your um, ducks in a row for for your flight and all your required pre-flight items done. Um, show them the route of flight, explain to them that you're gonna be putting in a flight plan and um, you have to copy down all those clearances and just show them how, how detailed you are and uh, that everything is laid out and you have specific steps that you have to follow. And uh, just talking through all that stuff uh, before your flight, I think will help give the uh, Give the one that's nervous a little bit of confidence in, in your abilities and in flying with you. And then the one that has lots of questions, hopefully that'll uh, satis satisfy his, uh, his need for having all those questions answered. All right, again, just giving as much uh, detail as you can about um, what you're thinking through to your, to your passengers. It'll help you uh, get through everything and think through it and also uh, give them more of that confidence. Uh, so you can explain to them your accelerate and stop distance, what that's for. Uh, with the Piper Seminole, you're going to have about 2,400 feet, and uh, the runway is plenty long enough. Takeoff distance is 1,500 feet, and uh, in the event that you do have an engine failure, you still have a single engine rate of climb of 175 uh, feet per minute with a pretty high temperature outside, uh, so temperature and pressure altitude factored in. Still have a good, good rate of climb, even if you do have that uh, unfortunate engine failure. It's a good idea to go over all those emergency procedures with them. Um, hopefully talking about emergencies doesn't scare, uh, especially the nervous one, um, but it, it hopefully should give them confidence instead of scaring them. So just explain to them, hey, if we have an engine failure after we've already taken off, we're going to uh, attempt to climb to a safe altitude, evaluate the engine if we, if we can get it restarted. Um, Go through our restart procedures of making sure it has fuel, making sure all our mags are on, and then attempting to restart that engine. And if all else fails and we can't, we're going to find a suitable place. We're going to pitch for our um, pitch for our blue line airspeed and <clears throat> get the plane in the right configuration to come down and land. Uh, hopefully, back at the airport that we took off from. Um, explain to them uh, what their role is going to be in that. If uh, your checklist calls for <clears throat> cracking the door open so in case you have a uh, off airport landing brief them on how to do that brief them on how to safely exit the plane after you've um, after you've got it onto the ground <clears throat> <coughs> you can also explain any other uh, 
pertinent aircraft systems to them. Say, hey, we're going to be flying at 8,500 feet. We may want to use uh, cabin heat. Explain to them how that works and what uh, what the system uses. Uh, talk about the um, talk about the CO2 detector too. If you have one in the plane, explain to them what to look for. Also, ask them to uh, look for traffic for you too, <coughs> just to help out during the flight. Like any other flight, uh, single pilot resource management is going to play a huge role in today's flight. Um, <clears throat> you do have passengers on board, but they're just passengers, they're not other pilots, so everything is going to be your sole responsibility as the PIC. You're going to want to make sure you give a good, thorough passenger brief, make sure uh, they know what to help you out with, they know uh, when to be quiet, uh, when you get radio calls and stuff like that, you need to focus on uh, flying or copying down clearances and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, if you do have competent passengers that can help you out with duties, uh, somebody's not feeling sick or something like that, uh, they can look out for traffic or, um, you know, listen up for your uh, call sign on the radio as well. You can also explain to them the benefits of having autopilot when you're single piloted. Uh, if you do have autopilot on your plane, you can set that and um, then work through putting in uh, any changes to your flight plan that you need to as you're flying through the air. Uh, all these things should, uh, explaining all these things to your passengers should help give them confidence and um, and enjoy the flight uh, as opposed to being nervous about it and scared to fly. So to wrap things up here, you want to you wanna be able to show your friends your level of knowledge to help instill that confidence in them, <clears throat> help the one that's nervous not to be nervous, and uh, the one that has all the questions, get them answered for them and um, make them see how enjoyable it can be to uh, be a private pilot. Always be prepared for an unfavorable outcome. Um, be ready in case you do have that engine failure. Um, know your emergency procedures. Um, know whether you have fully feathered any props or not. And uh, just make sure you know all your systems very well to handle any malfunction that you have. <laughs> Always stick to your personal minimums. Don't let the fact that you're <clears throat> trying to take your friends to go do something fun uh, sway any of your decisions. Um, always stick to your minimums and that will always keep you out of trouble. Have fun and fly safe. And these are the references that I use to uh, put this presentation together. I hope you all enjoyed. Thanks.